I've always been a DIY kind of guy. I like to hunt on my own, I like to do the research, and I really enjoy the process of setting up my own bows and guns. As a quote-unquote professional, I still consider myself an avid hobbyist at best, but I deeply value the relationship a guy has with the process of building his own gear. I try to keep things pretty simple, and maybe, due to my own limitations, that's the best a guy could ever hope to get. I'll never gain the accusations of doing anything perfectly, but at least through my years of success and getting by experience, I'll take as good as it's going to get every day of the week. After setting up my new rifle, breaking in the barrel and getting the new scope all dialed in, I can't wait to load up the truck and start heading south, way south, to the Texas and Old Mexico border. I've made this trip a few times before, south to Vegas, on to Phoenix and El Paso, then straight south along the mighty Rio Grande. I'm down here to hunt for Barbary, more commonly known as Audet. I've hunted them once before with one of my best friends, Riley and Hallie Warwood, and killed a great heavy old ram. Smoked him. I've also done the solo option on a huge mountain property lined out by my man Mike McKinney where I lucked across an absolute beast of a sheep. On this hill, back here. Oh, look at that. Hmm. Mike operates West Texas Hunting Organization and leases up hundreds of thousands of acres of mountain hunting property exclusively for mule deer, javelina, and audad. He has a lot of other hunting opportunities too, but for me, I've totally fallen for the more affordable, self-guided hunting option. Bring your own food, your own bedroll, a stiff pair of boots, and a hardy pair of gloves, and get after it. Too bad I didn't get my license for today, we'd just end this. After being shown the lay of the land and a few great rams by the guide Dusty, we say our goodbyes and I hunker down to weather out the next two days of the storm. Not what I expected.
flashing red, so all I'm gonna do is just get it on. Just try to get it recorded. Oh. I knew it too. Back there, I thought, oh, you know what? I should change my battery before I crashed up over. This is before I saw him. I should change my battery. Before, and I thought, nah, nah. I got, I got a bar on there. I'll be good. Had I looked there, I would have known that I didn't have my battery. Then I would have hauled back to the truck and then come back up before I looked over. Or I should have seen him and then, like, oh, then check my battery. Then get out. But I didn't. I'm just stupid. I'm just stupid. Here's my battery pack. My extra batteries. I got GoPro batteries. I got mic batteries. But I don't got no big camera battery. Idiot. I've done this for enough years that you'd think something like that would never happen. But it did. I could have killed the sheep. There's no doubt in my mind. But I didn't come down here to just selfishly smash another ram, although I wanted to. I want a big ram, and I want a great film. I'm stuck with my own limitations, but then again, that's the commitment that I've made. I'm here to put in the work, not only as a hunter, but as a producer. Bringing the adventure to you in a pure and real way is what I'm all about. And if I hunt hard and do my job right, that's exactly how it will turn out. Classic example of why <laughs> it just isn't my day. Why I should have pulled out my Onyx before I climbed up out of the bottom. Planted his foot and pawed this out. I don't think you can see that. That's pretty cool. Cheap tracks.
So I snuck back, recorded, took off my pack, and as, as I took off my pack, I saw him kind of come out on the hillside and start to go. So I was like, crap, it's now or never. So I ran up the arroyo, left my sticks and GoPro here. and I couldn't get a shot. Well, I could have got a shot or I could have filmed. And... I can't talk about <laughs> Journal of frustration time. No. I slapped the camera up. Tried to get footage. If I couldn't, there was a bunch of crap in the way. So I slid to the left and got the camera on them. And then I got my gun off and pack leaned up and was just looking at it getting ready to take a shot and I looked at the camera and the screen was just dark and it looked out of focus so I thought oh, I got time reached up got the camera situated back again went back to my gun by the time I got to the gun just as I had looked through the scope that's when they all kind of turned and started booking it I then looked back at the footage and the first time the footage was fine. The, like where the camera was at, it wasn't zoomed in all the way, but it was like it was fine. And they were all just freaking standing there. And I was on the gun and when I looked up and saw that it looked really dark, it was probably just the angle on the viewfinder from three feet away. And my paranoia that I wouldn't have it on film and thinking that I'd have time, reached up and fixed it and then just screwed myself out of a shot. These cameras add an element to a hunt or an adventure that is just frustrating. Like, it's just freaking frustrating. Uh, I need a cameraman. Do some glassing. It's my little bitch and moan session. Without a doubt, this hunt rocked me. I mean, I had three opportunities to kill in five days. And uh, one, I chose, well, all three of them I pretty much chose not to. Why? Because I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted all the camera. I wanted the footage. I needed to be steady. I needed a clear shot. And when it all came together, it just not, none of that all came together. I say when. Five full days can never go by as fast as they do on a five day hunt. Rained out for two and limited to the miles a chubby kid can hike. I gave it my all. I did both my jobs right. It was just unfortunate that I couldn't get them both in line at the same time. But that's the commitment I've made, for now, for today. As for the next hunt, maybe not so much. I'm all out of camera angles, I don't have any more. I just wanna get out of here, goodbye.